I, I want to just point out, since we don't have a vegan on here arguing the vegan sort of anti-meat perspective, but, um, you know, there's been various hypotheses put forth by that community and some research to support various lines of this. Uh, for example, that uh, meat raises mTOR levels and mTOR is, you know, oncogenic promotes cancer or IGF-1 levels or the byproducts of cooking meat, uh, heterocyclic amines and things like that or the compound in beef new 5GC or the TMAO hypothesis or, you know, saturated fat and cholesterol clogging arteries, all these kinds of arguments about why animal food consumption is harmful. And since we don't have a vegan on here, can, can each of you just kind of make a brief statement on why you think none of those things hold water or why you think the evidence overall indicates that animal foods are either healthful or compatible with good health. Um, can, I, can I comment on just, can I just respond to what Alex said before we do that, Ari? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I just wanna be clear that I've not, um, uh, I'm not taking a position that humans are not omnivorous. Uh, I think that omnivory is something that's widely misunderstood and that if you look at omnivores, um, the majority of omnivores specialize. They either focus the majority of their diet on animal foods or on plant foods. So over 70% of omnivores make more than, you know, 80% of their diet or 70 to 80% of their diet, either plant or animal foods. So there are sort of plant-leaning omnivores and animal-leaning omnivores within the zoological collection of species on the planet. And I think that my position uh, is that humans are probably or appear to be an animal leaning omnivore mm -hmm. and i base that position on uh, unique nutrients in animal foods bioavailability of nutrients in animal foods and uh, paleoanthropology our focus on animal foods originally which probably had very unique effects on the growth of the brain and made us sort of who we are as humans today as homo sapiens so uh, i think that that's just a position i wanted to clarify mm -hmm. interestingly there there appear to have been more herbivorous or plant-leaning species of hominids, like Paranthropus bozii, that went extinct. So around the time of Homo erectus, Homo habilis, there, uh, there's evidence of, uh, from uh, stable isotope studies that there was a species that leaned more toward plants in terms of its, in the sake of, from the perspective of its omnivorous, uh, you know, uh, physiology, and that species went extinct. So that's quite interesting. And I completely agree that there, there is evidence that 85,000, 100,000 years ago, we did swing more toward uh, plants. Not, I don't think we swung to be herbivorous omnivores, but we started eating more plants in some uh, studies, probably due to the lack of megafauna or mm -hmm. some would hypothesize that there was a megafaunal extinction. So from that, I've kind of suggested the hypothesis that if we look at, and I think Alex and I may disagree on this, if we look at the relative value of animals and plants in the human diet, I sort of see animals as superior to plants and animals as the, the central piece of the human diet and that when humans can't get animals, they may rely on plants more as quote survival foods or as a quote fallback food. Um, so I think that that'll be an interesting point of the conversation, whether plants are uh, in fact fallback foods or whether they serve a unique role as a central part of the human diet, but that's my position on plants that, okay. that generally animal foods have been sought as the primary food for humans and that we do have omnivorous physiology. We can eat plants and not die. Um, and we have retained some features of, of uh, that work that are found in our, our herbivorous ancestors and primates, chimps and bonobos. But as Alex was suggesting, there are also many adaptations to meat eating. A uh, very small, large intestine relative to primates, a longer, small intestine, and our acidic stomach. Uh, there's all kinds of things. The way we handle uh, fatty acids, um, insulin resistance as a response to starvation. Uh, there's so many adaptations that really are focused on, on meat eating for humans. So I just wanted to add that kind of that perspective. And sure. your question, Ari, was about all of these vegan arguments about the negative compounds in, in meat. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, 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 a little bit more complex than a short uh, 
45 well, I, seconds. I, I, don't, I don't mean for you to systematically go through the evidence on each of them, but what I mean is what, what do you feel is the most compelling evidence that has convinced you that meat is compatible with good health or is su actively supportive of good health? 2.5 million years of hominid evolution with clear evidence for a preference for meat eating and, you know, uh, there's anthropologic evidence and ethnographic evidence of hunter-gatherer tribes that eat a lot of meat and are very healthy. And so there's, there, and then you can look at the medical literature and if you want to go into each of those pieces, you can really make strong arguments that start to expose the, uh, the fragility of those arguments, whether it's TMAO or new 5GC mm -hmm. or heterocyclic amines. I mean, there's, there's a large amount of evidence to suggest that those are all very uh, difficult to defend positions based on the majority of medical literature, and that makes sense evolutionarily and anthropologically. Okay.